You're watching The Political Vigilante. I am Graham Elwood. Like it and subscribe so we can do more vigilanteism for politics. Mm, great sentence. I'm not going to say that. Today I'm talking about an article that was in the business section of USA Today, Monday, February 6th, written by Rhonda Abrams. The travel ban threatens Main Street small businesses. What this article goes into is specific businesses and industries that are going to be affected by the travel ban um, in many ways. Their employees are immigrants. The owners of the companies are immigrants. Um, Steve Jobs' uh, natural-born father was uh, Syrian. <laughs> so we wouldn't, we wouldn't have... Uh, um, his, but yeah, Steve Jobs' biological father was Syrian, so we wouldn't have Apple or this phone that I'm talking into or Pixar. <laughs> it's affecting a lot of things. What the article goes into, and I'll read some excerpts from it, is specific things like the hospitality industry and how tourism could be drastically affected. Why people wouldn't want to come here and spend money or even just in big cities like Los Angeles where I live, which is very diverse city. The immigrant communities, you know, Los Angeles has a Chinatown, a Thai town, you know, Latino neighborhoods, uh, African-American neighborhoods, Little Armenia, all these communities, if they're afraid or feel unwelcome, they're not going to spend money outside of their community. This is just, then this is blue liberal Los Angeles. Imagine anywhere else. Uh, imagine any city or any town where there's just a handful of people from another country in, it, in that town and everyone else is mainly American. They might not want to spend their money. That hurt, this hurts, this travel ban. On this, you may think, oh, it's good for security. It's just, it's so short-sighted. It's un-American. I don't think it's very, even if you don't think it's, it's racist or immoral or anything like that, and you think, yeah, this is keeping America safe. It's, it is hurting, it will hurt business for sure. I also think it's immoral and un-American. <laughs> it goes against this, like, my great grandparents came over here from Europe, primarily Ireland, to escape the potato famine. So this country was built by immigrants. So to suddenly start banning them is ridiculous. Then we should, as I've said, we should ban then white Christians after the Dylan Roof the kid that shot that church in South Carolina. Should we, should we start banning white Christians because some of them have committed awful crimes? No, we shouldn't. Just like we shouldn't ban Muslim nations. So we're going to go into this. Um, Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, was at one of the protests at the San Francisco airport sent, uh, January 28th. And he was quoted as saying, I'm here because I'm a refugee. <laughs> um, Google, along with more than 40% of Fortune 500 companies, was founded by an immigrant or child of an immigrant. Those companies employ more than 3.6 million Americans. In 2010, immigrant business owners were responsible for 15% of all business revenue in the U.S., or $121.2 billion. That's why this is so short-sighted. People, you know, they look at that map of the U.S. after the election. The whole center of the country is red. Those, those are, that's farming communities primarily. And I've been out, I've done shows in those. I have a cousin that lives in Montana. I've driven through those areas and there's not that many people. And then you go to the little small towns and just about everybody there is white. So you don't see, you don't see the effect of the world. You know, there was a time in America between 46 and 2001 or so where if you grew up in a small town or whatever, you went to high school, you graduated high school and you could get a decent job in a plant or in a mill, or, you know, for this or that, and you had a good job, and that job afforded you a two-car garage and all these benefits, and you didn't really have to think about the world out there. Well, now we do. We have to think about the world out there, and we're a nation of immigrants. If we started banning immigrants every time there was a crime by someone in an immigrant community, we would have nobody here. <laughs> and economically, it, it's, it's bad sense. So... 
that's just one company, Google, that was founded by an immigrant. As I said, Steve Jobs' biological father was a Syrian immigrant. Um, immigrants are the driving are driving new job creation in the U.S. Immigrants start businesses at almost double the rate of non-immigrants, according to the 2012 Kauffman Foundation study. All over America, people owe their jobs or their businesses to immigrants. It's likely that many of your customers and vendors are immigrants. As immigrants feel unwelcome and afraid, they stop coming, stop uh, starting, or stop funding businesses, and they stop spending. Because when somebody comes here from a poor or war-torn country, which I've been to them, I've been to Afghanistan, I saw minefields, I, I, fed, I saw kids, orphans playing along a side of minefields, I've, I've been to Brazil in the favelas, these shanty towns, Brazil where the minimum wage is something like $350 a month. So immigrants come to America and see the land of opportunity and they bust their ass and in so doing, help the economy and create jobs. And if no one wants to come here to spend money or buy our products overseas or do business with any of us, then that's a real serious problem. If no one wants to buy American products, it doesn't matter how many manufacturing jobs Trump creates here. It just creates more isolationism and a, and a long-term economic problem. Here's another excerpt from the article. Um, Such a unilateral and unreasonable travel ban inhibits visitors to the United States with almost certain negative effects on the hospitality industry, an industry dominated by small, small businesses. Hotels, bed and breakfast, restaurants, tour guides all suffer as tourism diminishes and the CEO of... <laughs> The leading hospitality companies, one of the leading hospitality companies, Expedia, is himself an Iranian refugee who could be caught up in the Trump travel ban. If you're living in another country and you've got tourist money and you're like, oh, I've always wanted to go to the U.S., I don't know if I'm going now. It, well, if you're from one of those countries, you're definitely not coming here. But you could be living in Australia or whatever and just go, I'm not going to the U.S. I don't want to go support that country. Their crazy travel ban. I don't want to get. I don't want to get hassled at the border, or even just give them my money. I'd rather give another country my money. That's what I would think. <sighs> Going back to this article, that's why business leaders on the right and the left, Democrat and Republicans, have spoken out against Trump's travel ban. It's not surprising that in the response to Trump's travel ban and and behavior, the stock market has dropped. I talked about that in another video about the Goldman Sachs doing a report that they're worried about this. This is specifically how the travel ban affects us. I'm an American comedian and I've done tours. Um, I've gone to Australia to perform. I've gone through Japan. I've gone to Hong Kong. I've gone through China. Maybe they're not going to want to see me. Maybe they're not going to want to give an American comedian a job over there, or it's just going to be a problem for me traveling because there's going to be all this reciprocal banning of Americans in countries. I performed for the military in Kuwait. If You know, like I performed for the military in Iraq. What if somebody offered me a gig? What if there's somebody shooting a movie for me to do in Iran or the Middle East or somewhere and they just go, nah, you're not in. We're not letting you in. Like what they... Iran threatened to do with the U.S. men's wrestling team. They have a tournament in Iran, and they were said they couldn't come. I believe the Iranian government has switched that, and now they're letting the Americans come wrestle. But there you go. Why is anyone going to want to help us with anything? It's going to hurt us economically. It is so short-sighted. Contact your senators and representatives, and also vote with your dollars. Don't support any companies that support this travel ban. And companies that do... Um, support refugees and our safe cities, give your money there. Show them, let, the numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. You can't have alternative facts with math, okay? So as I've said, vote with your dollars and thanks for watching, you guys. And hopefully we'll get the lighting situated and fixed. <laughs> I'm Graham Elwood.